Welcome back to Hearthstone Champions League. We're, we are here in the match, Ardy versus Hoy. My name is Nimshan, I'm here with Raven. And uh, we jump into the game a bit late, but Raven, what, what's going on here? Yeah, so we have Ardy, you bringing his rogue, lining up against Hoy's druid. So, really interesting matchup, actually, because the rogue has the ability to clear like the big druid boards with uh you know the big blade flurries but other than that it can very easily slip away because this is one of the matchups i feel that if the rogue doesn't have the big clear and can really hold on to tempo it can really suffer from just being unable to clear the board and uh, the druid doing the combo and just finishing the game pretty quickly yeah that's absolutely right and um let's see how it how it goes uh, for now Hoy can cast for, for 6 mana, he can use the Innervate to cast something this turn, and then on 5, um, cast one of the... Like, this is a very interesting hand, right? Because on 5 he has Lothlip, he has Archdrake, but he also has uh, a passable Innervate into Ancient of Lore, but you probably don't want to do it uh, if you have two good 5 drops. So Innervate into Lothlip this turn might be interesting, especially because you see the Violet Teacher and you want to block the spells from being played. Yeah, I completely agree, because the Innovate Low Theb locks out the Teacher to a certain extent, and also, even if the Low Theb gets sort of half dealt with, then the Shade's big enough to kill the Teacher anyway, next turn. So this is a really good play and should really like uh, cause some issues for either you. He can play his own Low Theb as an answer, but then the trade suddenly, you know, go backwards and, and they're like negative for him, especially because Hoy then gets the uh, slight uh, initiative in terms of being able to play like the Drake to then follow up and keep ahead on the board. Yeah, so for now, pretty straightforward game uh, on both sides. Are you just trying to get that damage? But uh, this this will be a, a really good turn for for Hoy with that Azure Drake, as you mentioned. And uh, turn six doesn't look terrible. Uh, I mean, he probably would like to have something different, like uh, a Thorsten maybe or Sylvanas. Uh, but uh, Keeper is still something that he will be able to play. Uh, will be able to play on turn six. What about Are though? What will be his turn six? Yeah, it's gonna be a rough one. I think w there's potential that we just see double this here. Um, he could like deadly poison double this. It doesn't put anything on the board, but other than that, he's forced to uh, leave one minion up because he's just shy of being able to say like teacher poison and um, kill. He could poison and just kill and take five from the shade, which would save an this, which would be okay. But just a little bit, just tight on mana to be able to get the, the nice clean board clear. Yeah, like even if you go for Violet Teacher Eviscerate, you are losing your Violet, Violet Teacher to the Shade, and then you have literally nothing. Like you can just stall and try to get cards. Yeah, this is um really rough. We is he just gonna reverse and clear the board? Clearing the board might be the priority over the teacher because, as he said, the teacher just you, you're left with a one-one afterwards, which does nothing. So uh, this is pretty okay. He can then build up to potentially Violet Teacher and sap anything that gets played next turn from Holly. So now, knowing that there are saps in the deck, and there is um, a deadly poison, can you afford to charge face? Um, I think it's a real tough one, like, because sap, um, he does have the follow-ups for turn 7, um, if, you know, he plays in taunt mode, the Druid of the Claw, um, but if he charges, then you have just seen one Eviscerate, so, you know, just playing the odds, like, you know, the Eviscerate's probably not going to happen next turn, so if he attacks him with the weapon to kill the 4-4, then it's going to require something like an SI7 agent, which he's already seen one of, and a fan of knives, or, or a fan of knives, so pretty rough, but he did go for the taunt, and they're uh, going to be on the receiving end of RDU's sap. All right, are you keeping preparation for something like Sprint in the future? I'm just playing a simple 3-5 here. Uh, not really threatening, and that, that's not much, so I think Hoy can just go for Ancient of Lore and draw the cards. Yeah, I think this is okay. Anything else feels like it doesn't do enough. And he again, he's seen a sap, he's seen an abyss, and his opponent's only on three cards. And Rogue really does benefit from having a large hand, as you said, to like, if either you got prep into sprint next turn, then that's pretty huge for him in terms of like, you know, wrestling this game back. But Hoy, he does have a big hand himself, but I think, you know, drawing cards and putting a 5-5 five -five on the board always feels nice. A good card for you would also be Azure Drake. Like getting an Azure Drake, drawing a card, and then eviscerate the the five five. But whatever happens, he always has this one one that he can use. So, how many, however many spells he can play, the better for for RDU. But then Hoy might be looking for a swipe at some point to be able to deal with this board better. Yeah. Do you think there's a point to actually play the Druid of the Claw and hit just hero power down the one one maybe? 
And then if you get sapped again, then all the saps are gone and you're pretty free to do whatever you want. That was a possibility, but uh, Hoy decided to go for the kill on Violet Teacher and decides that because he doesn't have the swipe, he wants to get uh, rid of the of the threat as fast as possible. And there are not that many silenced targets in Rogue deck. The, the one I can think of is Edwin Van Cleef, but other than that, not that many. Yeah, this is going to work out really well for either you now, because he's drawing to Dr. Boom. He can actually just run his weapon, his 1-1 one -one into the, uh, the Keeper of the Grove if he wants to. And then, you know, having just Dr. Boom on board is pretty nice. And it sort of demands a big, big game hunter from Hoy to, to really, you know, like, come back onto the board. Yeah, and he has an innervate, so if he gets the big hunter, that will be a very big turn. And he gets it! Whoa! Oh, innervate into B. It will be a very big game hunter turn. Yeah, <laughs> off the top. And RDU is making a face. Yeah. That is uh, it's pretty rough. <laughs> but like this far into the game when you know you can draw an addition, it's like he had three chances, right, to get that BGH. The initial card draw off the top for the turn and then two more from the law. So RDU definitely a little bit rough and the SI seven agent can can do some work. So he can like uh oh well this is the issue, like he wants to really proc something to get the SI and the Eviscerate, but he won't be able to, so he's kind of hoping for a big hit on this bomb. Yeah, so he's getting the SI and the Eviscerate into that to, yeah. to um, ensure that the bomb actually lands uh, on face and he gets the damage, but one damage is not much, and I feel like RDU uh, absolutely needs this sprint, or Azure Jake at least, to, to have something. Azure Jake with a good follow up. Oh man, yeah. it's Torison. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely feels like RDU is pretty much shy on sprint or bust. Maybe he's got like one more turn to be able to draw sprint or something big. But after Boom being dealt with so efficiently, it's uh, definitely uh, feeling pretty rough. Yeah, and, th and this turn from Hoy can be really big with um, Druid of a Claw and Tone Form and Pile of the Shredder to put an insane amount of, um, of power on board. But you have to stop there and consider that Torison just for just a moment because. After playing Thorison, it's not really contested on board right now. There are only two cards for, for RDU, and you get so many good plays after that. Or maybe even just Ancient of Lore was an option, because specifically of the Thorison in your hand. So many options, but the, you cannot uh, just uh, underestimate the 4-6 and the 4-3. Yeah, this puts uh, the most power and the most minions on the board as well. So giving the rogue multiple minions after you've seen two of this, seen a sap, you know, seen one deadly poison already, then, you know, you're feeling relatively safe. And already this SI7 agent, I think, has to go into the shredder to stop the clean trade onto the five foot. So are you living in a rogue's nightmare? Preparation being your only part <laughs> of that. I am prepared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely, and uh, that is probably going to be a Thoris in turn now, uh, which means he can actually next turn play the combo and hero power to proc the 2-4 if it still lives. Are you ever threatened about this, uh, this board? Like, would you really be afraid of something here? So From uh, Hoy's point of view? Yeah, so like to, to kill Pillager and play it super safe, to never risk it, because you know... Oh, I I don't know, I think you're feeling very safe. The rogues on one, what can that one card or combination of two cards possibly be that puts you in that much trouble? I think like, I mean, it, just... because he's playing super safe, I like the 4-6 here. Um, we, we were thinking about Thoris and we were thinking about um, maybe some other combination, like Thoris and, uh, and Pilot Shredder, but that, that Druid of the Claw was stopping the pleasure here. Yeah, I mean, this is just, you know, either way is fine. You either take the option of, I'll take the value from Thorison now, or I'm just going to play super safe and just for every single turn, the, the rogue is less and less likely to deal with the ever growing board. I would be surprised if we don't see Thorison now, uh, Thorison Shredder, because then you just start to think, what does the rogue actually do? <laughs> There's like almost nothing that cleans all of this board up well and keeps the rogue in the game. Well, you can always also just force uh, of nature and go face with the shapeshift and uh, the, the watchman. Just, you know, to deal enough damage to have a combo finish next turn. But... Yeah, that's very true. You just poke for a bit more. But this this is like guaranteed combo next turn along with a hero power. And RDU isn't going to prioritize that too far as, as a kill target when there's Thorison and the Drake. Um, so the odds on something sticking this turn is so high, That's uh, and he's hoping for Doomsayer. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I wasn't one, so Hoy is taking game number one, locking his Druid away, and are you not getting a win with his, uh, with his Rogue? So what is left? So Hoy has a Shaman, that was, a, that was an Agro Shaman, and uh, a Paladin deck, which was a secret Paladin, where RDU 
as his own druid and a patient warrior. Yeah, I think Hoy is definitely going to want to hit this uh, the shaman into the rogue again. But because RDU's got like the, the, the greater expanse of choices, I guess uh, the odds on that shaman lining up, at least in this specific matchup, are pretty low. Okay, so Secret Paladin versus Patron Warrior. And I believe that will be a good matchup for uh, the Patron. And we've discussed it before, Paladin can win if uh, the curve is really good and if they can just checkmate the warrior before things happen. We've seen it uh, between ECOP and uh, was it Ecop and Hoy? Ecop and Hoy, I, I believe. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Where Ecop um, just didn't get the cards he needed. Yeah, and uh, he just didn't, he, the patrons came too little too late, I think. Um, so, oh, this is an interesting hand. You got the good turn two, three play, and then uh, and then good old Tyrion for <laughs> seven turns time. It might get useful at some point. Uh, Avenge is not something you really want to see, but uh, it can also be useful. Yeah, I mean, something that's uh, reasonable next turn is he doesn't have to commit too hard into the muster. Like, actually, Hero Power Revenge seems, you know, okay, because then you're not too heavily blown out by the uh, by the AOE. But this is definitely rough to see the girl kind of automatically locks out the uh, the juggler one way or the other. Yeah, it, it just you hmm. have to run the juggler into is, is juggler Avenge pass worth? Uh, probably not because of Acolyte of Pain. Yeah, that's true. I'm just thinking, like, if the juggler then gets avenged, then you have a decent follow-up with a uh, muster into competitive spirit. Uh, it's always rough because you you sort of tiptoeing around the uh, the whirlwind effects from the warrior because whirlwind can like you know ruin uh, ruin the muster so hard. But this this is pretty good as well. He actually just clears off that effect and uh, puts the juggler on board for the potential next turn because it's almost guaranteed that either you didn't have a weapon to play that early because he just would have played the weapon over the ghoul to kill off the uh, the juggler. Yeah, also with the secret, you hope that uh, maybe you are bluffing Noble Sacrifice and uh, the weapon might not go into Juggler, but RDU is happy to see it was no Noble Sacrifice and Red Corsair is a pretty good start here. Yeah, the, the rough play there with the, the, the bluff potential is always there, but there's never a point that RDU doesn't try and kill that Juggler as well. So um, I think... Uh, Get, but getting the Avenge down when you've got a follow-up of Must is pretty nice, because unless there is a straight-up AoE, then the odds on you getting you know, at least some value there is pretty high. So, a, a terrible situation for Hoy where you can't play anything? Or can you? Um... So, if you go... Let me think. If you go for Master, can... you force the attack, right? But And you know that the, the next turn is not turn, four, uh, turn 5, so you will not see a Green Patron. But still, you are losing your board. If you go for a 1-1, one, one, you're just losing it anyway. Well, if you go muster Noble Sacrifice, you do get the Avenge off, right? Because the weapon kills the Noble Sacrifice first. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then obviously the 3-3 three, three then dies. Uh, well, the 3-3 the three, three kills the, uh, the Avenge target. So it's just a, a board wipe in general. Right. Uh, but with this situation, even with... Um, like, you force the Despot attack. In a way, because uh, like, can you really leave this board with two secrets on? Yeah, I think you, the, the AOE feels too good. But then, then again, like, can you afford to leave it on knowing you have patron? Actually, probably not, because he doesn't have the inner rage for patron, so he'd only summon two anyway. So yeah. I think this is right. Yeah, the, the attacks actually uh, pretty good from either you. And that berserker is a rough card because unless there's a a keeper of alderman in hand then, you know, it's really hard for the Paladin to actually kill this Frothing Berserker. There is a Noble Sacrifice, so it should stop the Berserker for one turn at least. And then there there is going to be a Belcher, so Berserker will be protected. Interesting. Yeah, there's even the option of uh, potentially just playing the, uh, the Belcher afterwards and just not attacking and just, uh, you know, letting the Frothing Berserker just generate more and more damage. Alright, so how are you going for the Noble Sacrifice and Free Dudes? Uh, he still has Competitive Spirit and Avenge, so not an easy way to clear the dudes which are going to grow. Oh! There is a weapon. Is this worth just to put that much pressure on? <laughs> to go face? Or like? Yeah, just weapon face, prop the Noble Sacrifice and just smoke with the Froth and Berserk. <laughs> Assert dominance with a big hit. I, I, I guess Belcher is the safer play. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Especially because you still have a good chance to do it next turn. 
This board yeah, does not contest true. Belcher. Well, it kind of yeah, does it, after it, a competitive period. It kills Belcher, but that's it, right? Yeah. Um, it requires everything that's currently on board to kill the Belcher, and that's with comp spirit as well. Uh, I do like the pass here. Um, I don't think it's worth proccing secrets on the turn. You can't really bank it. Yeah, absolutely. I think passing is, is correct. Uh, there, um, sometimes pa Secret Paladin plays one Consecration. Um, depends on the build. Most of, most of them, they don't play any, but if Consecration is the thing, then you're just giving away um, your and minion here. The good point about passing is you don't want to proc all these secrets the turn that Mysterious Challenger might be played. Because yeah, then exactly. it just gets even more value and pulls the other secrets straight out of the deck. But there is now yep. Belcher for, for Hoy. Is, is it like Belcher pass? <laughs> or can you... Oh man. I think if you Belcher, uh, the two two twos into the Belcher, your weapon into the Belcher, kill the one two with your wep uh, with your other two two, yeah. then that sets up two minions to still benefit from the like potential avenge on the smaller minion, and it still locks out this Frothing Berserker in an awkward manner, because now even a weapon doesn't deal with this. He needs execute to, to have a chance of killing the uh, of attacking, sorry, with the Frothing Berserker and hitting face. So Hoy's feeling pretty safe as RDU would need a lot to actually finish this game with a 15 damage Berserker to face. And RDU just having minions, just sitting on this big Berserker and, and can't do anything. So if he goes for the weapon, is it even worth to, to... Yeah, like if you go for a weapon you can actually get through Noble Sacrifice and hope Avenge lands on Belcher. Then you slam your Frothing into the buffed Belcher and you have still 4 mana to play another frauding so i guess like you play frauding first then weapon yeah this this feels so rough because imagine if either you had whirlwind execute yeah like the game just the game just ends <laughs> like the game is just over but like as we said he's got a little bit heavy on the minions when he really wants those uh those spells or even like a battle rage to try and draw into that combo or something it's a uh, Kind of rough. He's gonna just play another berserker and try and uh, you know build up that guy <laughs> and hope he can do it the following turn. But Tyrion's definitely a card that can lock out a warrior pretty hard on uh, from turn eight onwards. Yeah, but then on the other hand, we have Gromash, who is a great card to finish the game. If uh, anyhow, Dario is a twenty-five. If he finds a way to deal with Tyrion, the Avenge going on the worst target for RDU as well. Mysterious Challenger! Just on time were all the secrets procced. It was waiting for this specific moment. Yeah, the, the clear on the Berserk. The, the Avenge going on that target was pretty huge. Because um, Hoy still keeps the taunt up, right? So, yeah. so he has it, a minion. And, Yeah, two minions, including the Challenger, when the secrets on board is so big. Um, and then the follow up with Tyrion. I was using a rough point. <laughs> There is even more important thing, that Mistress Challenger is a great turn for Hoi, but RDU has a really bad turn next to it. He only has a Patron and an Armor Smith. Yeah, this is how rough the matchup can be when you don't get Patrons on the board quick enough. Patrons like pretty much close out the game versus Paladin, if you can get them down. But th this is just feeling too late. And now there's Battle Rage when he's got no minions left and uh, literally has to just Battle Rage two mana draw one card and hope for the best. I don't even know what you could draw. Well, there, and, is, a, <laughs> there is a Whirlwind, was, so that's something. Yeah, yeah but he's like, then like typical five mana when he could have paid your Whirlwind if he had like six mana. So definitely a little bit rough. And now Tyrion's going to look even... Even worse. Yeah, Tyrion is um, is almost locking this game. The fact that Dar uh, that Hoy at the at the moment has so much damage, he can even deal with with Armor Smith quickly to uh, get rid of a of a chance to actually pop the shield easy. And uh, yeah. well, Armor Smith is never good if you're racing. So you can also go for face. It doesn't matter that much at this point because he he might want to kill RDU as fast as possible. But I, I definitely see value in killing Armor Smith as well. Yeah, and I think the, the thing with ignoring the armor smith is it makes the 6-6 six, six, uh, that they're uh, not Tyrion, the challenger, uh, awkward. Like, it's not going to just die to an easy execute, right? Yeah. So, you know, it requires, like, something to hit it. Because you've got the uh, the sludge up. I think it's reasonable to actually push for damage. Oh, and Hoy disagrees and actually does kill off the armor smith. But as you said, it, you know, it's fine because what he's doing is he's negating the potential of the warrior gaining a lot of armor on the following turns. Yeah, and also... Um... A shield pop as well. If you if you want to do something like attack with the with the weapon into noble sacrifice, then attack with the armor smith into Tyrion, then whirlwind execute. 
uh, that would be an option for you, but not anymore. And uh, for RDU, it's not that next turn, but if he just goes for the patrons... Uh, that's, uh, that's two patrons only! <laughs> the loot horror. That feels bad. Imagine if there was a repentance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll be so bad. Oh, I've done that man, before to yeah. Patreon Warriors, and it's fantastic. Friggin' repentance. <laughs> nobody, nobody plays it. Or nobody I rather plays rounded, right? Like, you're forced to, to do it anyway. Yeah, it's, uh, there's very few circumstances where you can kind of afford to play around that card as Patron. Um, but this is an interesting one. Do you value just killing off two of the two Patrons with True Silver and then keeping Tyrion intact? I, I think, think you still you want to kill minions because then you're just locking warrior away. There is no way warrior will come back uh, from this. But uh, on the other hand, if you go face for how much, seventeen, um, you will you might get the Ashbringer. But I'm fine with killing this board and uh, just saying to warrior, hey, you maybe had that one battle rage. You're not getting another one. Yeah, and actually, I take it all back. This is pretty nice from Hoy. Um, using the Tyrion because it means that both minions aren't susceptible to Whirlwind. Whereas if you use the Challenger, it, you know, Whirlwind suddenly removes six damage off the board. And whilst not attacking to face, that's actually a lot of pressure. Yep. And there's still all the secrets up for me. This there's... is a truly an uphill climb for RDU. It's tough, especially because it, if he loses this game, and, and I feel this is uh, already a lost cause. He will have to win three times versus Hoy's Shaman, uh, being a fast deck. It's a, it's certainly possible, but it, it will be tough. And if he doesn't win versus Hoy's Shaman three times, he will be eliminated from Hearts and Shames League. Yeah, and the problem is one of those decks he has to beat the, uh, the Shaman with is the Rogue, which um, definitely struggles in that matchup, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really bad matchup for the Rogue uh, versus Face Shaman. Okay. So the rage goes onto the patron, but that's probably is that just game now? Oh look, there is this consecration. It's a one off. So twelve. We were plus... we were talking about this last night, weren't we? The one off consecration. Yeah, that so, I, 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 it I wins like, games, like I said. <laughs> and it's exactly lethal with that consecration. Well, there we go. So um, pretty pretty rough for RDU, to be honest. That match it. That, that is pretty much what happens when you don't uh, get the earlier uh, patrons down on the board and Secret Paladin draws relatively well. So um, I think getting that Mysterious Challenger on for turn 7 was pretty big. Hoy could have very easily whiffed with like a Secret Keeper on turn 7, which suddenly just puts no pressure on the board. But, you know, he, he did what Secret Paladin does, so uh, pretty good game for Hoy there. What do we pick now as RDU? Like, what, what deck do you take versus Shaman? All right, he, he took Warrior, so... <laughs> Uh, probably you just want to continue uh, with a with a good matchup. Isn't even a good good matchup though. You can stop. You can armor up. You can stop the early aggression with whirlwinds, unstable ghoul. You have armor smith, so it should be okay. Yeah, and add, what's how do you use third deck again? How do you use third rogue, deck? Warrior so and rogue and druid. Ah, uh, druid. Yeah, I mean warrior is probably his best matchup. Druid's okay. Because um, if you can just say you get, you know, either the Aspirant or a Wrath or something to just slow the Shaman down, then when you start dropping things like Lothab, Double Druid, or the Claw, then you can really secure and then just kill kill the Shaman. But I think Warrior is definitely a good one, and he's got Fiery War Axe now, so that's going to feel at least a little bit good for having you. Yeah. That, if, without the Fiery War Axe, it will be um, quite interesting, because Hoy again got a very good start with the one drops. But Fireworks is going to deal with that, and uh, a follow-up of uh, Frothing Berserker, you know, it's always good to have the minion that can actually trade into whatever Shaman plays, and Frothing is one of those minions that can actually uh, help you to contain the early game. Yeah, but we do see Hoy has Doomhammer, which is a huge card. It's a fantastic card overall in most matchups with uh, the Shaman deck, but against Warrior especially, you put on so much pressure, and no one's really running weapon removal anymore. There was a point where almost everyone was including Harrison uh, in, in almost every deck uh, to, to just deal with these weapon classes, but the, the Shaman doesn't really suffer too much from this with, with the Doomhammer at the moment, and, and put on so much pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, why, why do you think it's that? The, the weapon classes... Probably uh, the weapon removal was there because Patron was so popular. And now Patron, even though we see it from time to time, it's not like it's it's the the most... Uh, the class to beat, right? Like, I feel the class to beat is, um, is Paladin and, uh, and Druid, where 
if you remove a weapon, like Lies Justice, it doesn't feel that great. Yeah, and I think that's exactly the problem. Um, Patron Warrior is definitely a deck that's still used uh, often by people who like the deck, whereas Paladin, for example, is just one of the strong deck almost any, almost everyone just picks up and plays. And the issue with Paladin is the weapons really aren't the problem. <laughs> the, uh, the, you know, the, the curved minions and the Research Challenger are the problems. And unfortunately, dropping Harrison on five, then your, your opponent plays Challenger on six. Um, you know, fine. <laughs> like, you know, you get pretty rough tempo loss even though you do draw a card potentially. An interesting turn for Hoy because instead of uh, throwing away uh, one of the one drops, he can actually coin the horse rider and go for face to force uh, an attack with the weapon and removal, but uh, decides to go for the one drops anyway. Yeah, this is this is pretty okay now, just uh, he's kind of good that he got into the Tunnel Trogon. He actually saved the coin there, because at that moment he didn't have a good two, uh, turn 2 play, so he's just going to play the Lepinome afterwards. And This is an interesting one, he, uh, Hoy can actually clear off this uh, Berserker. And it, it's a really weird card for Othin Berserker, sometimes you, you combo it to try and do loads of damage, but sometimes it's actually a big enough threat to just drop and say, look, you can ignore this and keep going phase, but I might wipe your board next turn and then hit you for 10. <laughs> So it's uh, pretty reasonable for Hoy there to clear this up. Absolutely, and Ardu is missing turn 4. He actually doesn't have turn 5 as well. He got that Grommash and Dr. Boom, which are super late if you think about what Shaman can do and how much damage can Shaman pack early game. Especially when it looks like Hoy has the potential to coin into Doomhammer next turn, which is always scary. Uh, he does use the Inner Rage instead of the Slam, because I think Ardu is at the point where Slam can probably A, kill off a slightly bigger minion, but also he might actually need it to draw because he does have Execute to like Slam Execute, say this Golem, for example. Yeah, I, I think that was a good choice. Uh, now for Hoy, if he coins the Doomhammer, he will uh, be overloaded for free, I believe. So on turn 5, he'll have a possibility to uh, just unlock the mana with the Lava Shock and then play something like um, a Totem Golem. If he goes for the Totem Column this turn, and uh, and the Totem, is that better? Uh, I don't know. I think I like getting the Doom Hammer online, like, early as possible. Uh, the Totem Golem and the, the Totem's okay. Uh, and I guess what it means is he can still Doom Hammer and then Lava Shot, Lava Burst the turn after. Yeah. Uh, as in, like, Doom Hammer next turn, then Lava Shot, Lava Burst the turn after. So, you know, either play's fine. I think I would have favored the Doom Hammer, but I'm pretty confident Hoy's a better player than me, so I trust his judgment. <laughs> I think he just wanted to get as much damage from the minions uh, before the weapons get there. So he tried to, to use that, but it didn't work because there was the, the execute, obviously. So now going for the Doomhammer, he's not afraid of uh, being locked with the crystals. Yep, this is pretty nice. He can uh, defend that 0-2 uh, that uh, totem there, the healing totem. And he's actually got a reasonable follow-up. He can even just get the horse rider on the board next turn now, which is, like you said, uh, you know, Banking that minion damage is pretty good because, you know, you want that repetitive damage and the Divine Shield really helps with that uh, against uh, most classes. The problem is, though, he is running out of cards and Warrior is still at 26 and still has the war Warrior's hero power. Where on turn 7, we're going to see Dr. Boom and on turn 8, I would not hate just seeing Ramash attacking something because Shaman normally doesn't have ways to deal with those, those big cards. Uh, Elemental Distraction is something that people play in their Shaman decks but it's not like you want to get to those turns. You want to win before that happens. Yeah, I completely agree. And looking at this turn for RDU, um, he, like you said, he's looking okay, but the second Hoy draws uh, Ancestral Knowledge, for example, it suddenly becomes very scary again. But I, Acolyte Hero Power seems fine, because there's no... The, if Earthshot comes out on Acolyte, you know, fine, I guess. Because I think Patron's, <laughs> yeah. too, Patron's too susceptible to just, like, Lightning Bolt. Done. You know, forget about it. You know, that, that that would be my worry. Whereas if it, Lightning Bolt comes out on the Acolyte, at least you draw a card, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think Ardu is in great shape. A 28, and you know you're playing Boom next turn. Acolyte is just the, just there, not dying for now. So, uh, Hoy, on the other hand, is in a bad position because you do want to kill the Acolyte. Well, you don't want Acolyte to draw many cards. You feel, you know you're behind. Is this the point where you have to um, just go face and just say, look, I've got Doomhammer, I have spells, um, you know, I've got the Horse Rider. Uh, there's potential that you even maybe uh, Lava Shock Horse Rider. Uh, just go face, let the Acolyte do what it wants, and then just hope 
that you just continue to draw it. Because if there's something Shaman can do, it's drawing the burn, right? Yeah, so exactly. It might just be the point where Holly decides to say, the way I win this game is by just going for it. If I put damage into a 1-3 minion, regardless of the opportunity it may have to draw more cards, then it you know, gives the opponent another turn to hit armor up. Maybe draw armor Smith Whirlwind, you know. There's a lot of uh, scary options for Holly. I definitely agree. And uh, there was an interesting decision to tot him up because if that would be a 1 1, then he ends up with Acolyte having a chance to draw a card. It's okay, Hoy knew it would be the perfect totem to deal with Acolyte. <laughs> so it's all fine. It did um, work. It did work out. Yeah, Boom seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, there is no reason to play anything else. He, he was thinking about the Unstable Golden Patron. But yeah, these totems are pretty trolly though, because this healing totem just buffs this, <laughs> this zero one back up against this acolyte's hit just means nothing anymore. Yeah. Um, and now two lava shocks, lava burst. I mean, he's slowly starting to stack up this damage, and I think we might even see a totem here to see if we can get spell power. He's got fifty fifty chance, right? Uh, yeah, he does, and it, it makes uh, it makes sense. I think Hoy, what he really wants to draw is a rock biter, so that uh, we see he has some burst, but he needs a bit more. So, as you mentioned before, ancestral knowledge would be great because he also can uh, follow up with lava shock and get rid of the overload. But if he gets a single rock biter at any point in the next two turns, he will be able to generate ten damage with the weapon. So yeah, yeah, it's, uh, he definitely needs that to push through and. Uh, you know, like you mentioned, he's sort of running out of time with this Doom Armor. <laughs> he's only got four, well, two more turns to use it. And there is no armor spell for RDU, so RDU only has the hero power for now. Yeah, this is definitely scary. Um, and this is what I mean about Shaman, like, suddenly, RDU's on 13, which is not a safe amount of health. <laughs> not even close. Yeah, actually. Uh, especially when there's still four from Rock, but, uh, for, sorry, from the Doom Hammer available. There's 13 damage available for Hoy, but there is a taunt and, um, and a hero power, so RDU is not dead yet. Yeah, well, there's, there's 15 with the uh, minion, right? If the minion yeah. doesn't yeah, die. Yeah, and without, but, yeah, the minion is probably going to die, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. The totem and the minion has to die. Yeah, to exactly. <laughs> because and then the thing is, that this is the issue. Okay, the totem dies, the minion dies, right? Then Hoy could easily just draw another lava burst. <laughs> Or, or ancestral just, uh, knowledge, or you know, get some, the something crazy. So what happens? Yeah, that's true. What happens if he gets the totem? If he gets the, the spell damage totem, he has. Will he be able to cast everything? Yeah, he will have. No wait, eight mana. So not enough mana to cast everything. But he might get one more turn. So one more draw to actually win the game. Yeah, because let's be honest, Hoy isn't close to death yet. You know, he's still got. You know, there's enough time. I think for one more turn. Does um, he though? Oh yeah, he does because um, there is a Doctor Boom. So if you get a spell damage totem, you can a lava shock, a lava burst face for for six, and then lava shock the ghoul, and lava shock for uh, for free. That's nine damage. They can uh, play the foul spirit. I, I was just trying to see if there is lethal uh, in the turns, but not really. So he will have to play the foul spirit. Oh, but that one extra damage from the totem might be important. Oh wait, there's a cooldown. Never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the Feral Spirit's fine. I think, again, Hoy can probably wait just one more turn and play the Feral Spirits, because then, like, with Ferals down on 27 health, you might even have bought yourself two more turns, which feels like a long time. I think the only thing Hoy's thinking about now is does he proc the ghoul whilst there's no Adam Smith on the board or patrons? There is no good way to, to deal with the ghoul though. You need to keep them hammer with two charges for a rockbiter top deck. And uh, you, you can't like really lava burst the ghoul. Yeah, it's a tough one because you just feel like if Armorsmith comes down now, then he's in a lot of trouble. Uh, looks like he, yep, he is passing though, he doesn't think it's worth it, which is uh, which is just as reasonable. Double whirlwind card, I imagine, if there wasn't Armorsmith. One more right. draw. Still no armor smith for RDU, so he can go up to 17. Oh man, if there is a Bog Biter top deck and uh, like. Hmm, actually, in the totem, in spell damage totem. Because with the spell damage totem, that's uh, 9 plus 3, 12 damage from hand. So, 12, 16 damage 
Uh, Earthshock will not be enough, but the, there are minions on board, so if the minions survive, if any minion survives, I doubt any minions will survive, actually. Mm. This is definitely a rough one. Um, the issue now for Hoy is like Ancestral Knowledge doesn't really dig him out because he doesn't have the mana to do it all anyway. Um, so this might actually swing over to RDU. Okay. Let's have a look. Abusive definitely isn't the card he wants to see. And yeah. with Grom Whirlwind and in a Rage in hand, along with just, you know, the casual boom. I mean, he has lethal on board. Uh, RDU, so regardless of his hand, it's pretty ruthless. So There's we might nothing, see. Right? Is there is there I mean, anything you can do? Like um, so so you can maybe go for the kills. Like you cannot win with this hand at the moment. So you might try to go for removal with the cards you have, and then hope for the rogue biter. But it still might not be enough. Like I I, I mean, spell them, show them, and then kill the free to patron. And then kill Dr. Boom with Lava Burst. Yeah, I think that's the only thing that can actually stall um, enough to actually win. It's it's really rough, this actually, for Hoy. Kind of really difficult to go through. I mean, he's probably going through his mind now all the potential outcomes of how he wins this game, but not clearing something definitely is a way to lose. Yeah. And the or scary you can part assume is. assume your opponent has nothing. No Grom. You still have to clear, though, right? Because there's Lethal on board. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh no, there's not. What am I talking about? There's not. Not quite lethal. This is okay. Gives him more patrons, but there is a zero one to work through. Um, Juicy RDU has uh, the whirlwind with the Grom. That's uh, that's yeah, lethal. That's yeah. A good game. Yep. All right. So okay. RDU takes first game. First, RDU takes first game in this match, and uh, he stays alive. But uh, Hoy has two more chances. He just needs to win versus Rogue, which is a good matchup for him. And uh, win versus Druid, which is... Uh, what do you think? Is, is it a 50-50? Versus Druid, I think... Uh, hmm. Hmm. I think it's slightly favored for the Shaman. But if people like, disagreed with me or went 50-50, then like, I, you know, I'd understand. I think it's really close. Um, but I think the Rogue is going to be the rough one. So considering that... Hoy just played his, his worst matchup with the Shaman versus Patron Warrior, and that was that close. You know, it shows how powerful this deck can be when it's uh, you know when it's actually working in long form. Absolutely. Oh man, and this is an elimination match. So RDU, if he loses at least once, he is out of the tournament, and Hoy will advance to play versus um, versus Ecop. Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's pretty big for these guys. And just yet again, just to stress, like the quality of every single group in this tournament, any two of the four in each group could go through, and it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be a surprise to be honest. It's um, it's more upsetting that we can't put all the plays through because you just want to see all these guys play each other all the time. That's right. And uh, Raven, can you remind me who do we have overall? Overall, because this is Group B, Day Two. Okay, so in Group A, we saw Stan Sifka and Sixo go through, and Kalento and Dog, uh, unfortunately, not go through to the, uh, the next round. Group C is Show, Life Coach, Drive Co, and Orange, and that'll be on Thursday. And Group D on Friday will be Oskaka, Hannibal Z2, Tides of Time, and Ty. So another two fantastic groups coming up in the future. Yeah, so uh, hopefully you guys will tune, uh, tune in on those days as well. But now we are starting Hoy versus RDU, game number four. If Hoy takes it, he will eliminate RDU from the tournament. Yeah, and this looks like uh, to Hoy's pretty good at drawing Tunnel Trog, I've decided. Um, but also, RDU's got a pretty reasonable answer of Coin Wrath. Um, the only. This is really wonky, actually. If he coins Wrath, he's turned to his hero power at the moment. And if he doesn't coin Wrath, he sort of rolls the dice on what RDU's got in his hand. And he probably wants to coin into Shade next turn to put a body on board that can potentially challenge the. Uh, the Trog and Live, but Ancestral Knowledge, pretty good pickup from Hoi. Yeah, it's really nice, even though he's uh, mostly just uh, forsaking turn free, where he hope uh, he hoped that he will get a one drop. Uh, he got those cards that are really important at the very beginning, and also using the Trog to deal some early damage. Yeah, so now uh, Hoi had to sort of commit into that pressure, because I think you... Oh, it's really tough, actually. You sort of presume 
you don't uh, the opponent doesn't have the wrath but i do made a really good call there saving the coin and saying i can take you know how much extra overload can you actually do on, on turn two you know so uh, i'm going to take the damage wrath it down and hold on to the coin for a much bigger play later in the game so really nice play from rdu there yeah and suddenly even though hoy has a lot of cards um rdu is in, in a good position where shade can react to Feral Spirit and kill one. Uh, he still has Pilot to Shredder for the next turn. He has Keeper to deal with uh, something small and then swipe if Hoi goes for, for a board extension. And uh, on the other hand, Hoi has a bit of, of an awkward situation where if you go for Feral Spirit, you, Abusive just feels bad. And then if you go for a Totem Golem and, a, and just a Totem, well, the good part is that a Totem Golem does not die to Shade, but then your Totem might not do much but that's probably the play. Um, he can also go for uh, just uh, Argent Horse Rider and Abusive for to face. If that's not something you want to do <laughs> very early. Yeah, well, so Totem going to be 1-1, one, one, not too terrible. It's probably going to get locked down pretty hard by a swipe from RDU this turn. Uh, so already RDU with the Druid seems to be a, uh, you know, the Wrath and the Swipe. He's had really good, you know, removal early game and really slowed Hoy down. He's actually got the health advantage uh, until, you know, this charge is going to come down. And the, the the nice charge and abusive there to actually clear off the shade, it looks like. Yeah, especially after swipe. Now you force RDU to make a move to play something. So he can go for Keeper and coin Hero Power. He can also go for Shredder and coin Hero Power. Yep, and they keep the Grove clearing up pretty good. Hmm. This is kind of tough. The, the, is he going to go Feral Spirit into uh, Oh, Horse Rider, okay. He could have Lava Burst the 2-4, but with the two taunts down that the Keeper of the Grove doesn't really trade very well with, I kind of like this. And suddenly when you're facing down two Lava Bursts, a Lava Shock and a Doom Hammer, it feels uh, it's pretty scary for the Druid. Yeah, I, I think this actually gave an opening um, to Hoi to be able to deal damage with the minions. Uh, he has a board that's tough to deal with, and if RDU goes for a coin, Dr. Boom, um, that will be super passive. So he might consider Force of Nature to clear. How, sc how, how scared is he? Because this is exactly what Shaman wants. Shaman wants some minions that will be able to deal the damage, and you can assume his hand is full of burst. And as we can see, it is full of burst. That's 12 damage he's holding, and a Doom Hammer. Yeah, and I think RDU needs to think about the fact that he hasn't seen many spells, in, like any burn spells, really, this game. So, and the Shaman runs a lot of them. So, you know, you've really got to think about, like, what is the potential? And we've all had games where Shaman's just absolutely stomped you from nowhere. Um, do you like Doomhammer now? And then next turn you Lava Shock, uh, Lava Burst, Lava Burst? How much damage is there at the moment? So you can deal 8 to face, uh, putting Druid on 15. And... Uh... 11. I don't hate it. I think it's actually a pretty good play. Just go face with everything. Play Doomhammer, go face, and then and you can actually follow up with that. Yeah. I think this is actually slightly better in case he draws another... Is, is that his first Lava Shock? I think it is, right? Uh, so, like, yeah. th this is slightly better because it means he can Lava Shock next turn if he gets it and still carry on with the double Lava Burst. So this is pretty nice from Hoy. So much pressure and... Uh, It'll be very impressive if RDU can uh, handle double Lava Burst next turn. He pretty much just needs heal. And he doesn't have it. He has so a that's, power. That's going to be game, right? Yeah, and match. And RDU gets eliminated. So let's see what is uh, his last turn. Like, is there anything he can do? Maybe, hmm. He has Azure Drake. But even if he goes uh, into Lothab with Innervate, he will not be able to cast it. He'll be uh, off mana. Uh, what other card can give uh, him the spell lock or health? Can he play Shredder and somehow kill it and get the totem that heals? <laughs> By like that. that's, yeah, that's literally the only thing I, I can think of, at least, unless there's some strange card in the deck we're not aware of. But this is rough. I mean, this is just what Shaman does, though, isn't it? It's like compression so hard and then out of nowhere. Like, even like, you know, this could be Lava Burst Crackle, Double Crackle. There are so many potential answers with what would be four cards from Hoy's draw. And he still has four damage from the uh, Doom Hammer, so this, there you go. Yeah, so much just damage. too much damage even with the Crackle. Yeah. All right, so Hoy is taking the match, eliminates RDU, and uh, now we will have one more match for you guys, so don't go anywhere. We'll have. Eco versus Hoi, but um, Raven, a, a summary for this match? What happened here? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, overall, uh, Hoy just uh, got some pr pretty good uh, power plays across the whole set, but in this match specifically, the, the Shaman just had too much of a head start, and I think the, feral, the turn with the Feral Spirits, building up the board as well as holding that burst, and not having to use any burn on minions from the Druid, just opened him up for so much damage, and there's nothing that you could really do about that. All right, that's a good summary. So, guys, stay tuned for the next match, which is uh, Ecop versus Hoy. The winner will go through to the top eight and uh, the playoffs. The loser is going to get eliminated. Both players have fast decks. So, see you in a moment.